analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here with It's that time for the Bob Ryan Gary Tangway Zoom it podcast right here on CLNS Media Network. We are brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Bob, uh, we've talked about the Celtics team as a whole quite a bit. So now let's focus on the coach. And you you find the maturation process and the development and this new personality in Joe Missoula very interesting. It's a coming out of that he's revealing himself to us with this utterances. Last year, uh, he was obviously just concentrating. I mean, you know he was overwhelmed. You know that he must have no awakened, doubt. gone to bed with 10,000 things in his head and awakened with, with 2,000 things in his head. And and worried about this and worried about that and 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 he was very uh, circumspect in his public utterances. He had nothing to say, really. You know, they just addressed the game. Uh, that he was asked the specific questions. He just did his job. It was due diligence and nothing more. What we're seeing is a lot of stuff running around that guy's head, and and uh, he, he's it's coming out in 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 uh, you know in sequences. And uh, the most interesting one this week, I thought was when he was, among other things, talking about why what the rebound issue is and why they've had some trouble occasionally with offensive rebounding and talking about this and that. But he was talking about the fact that he considers the fact that people are nitpicking this team, whether it's about the end of the game plays, whether it's about offensive rebounding, whatever it is, as a compliment that that they're so good that people have to have to find reach, go reach, you know, to find a criticism. And that the and, and that the people care, you know. He, I mean, he grew up in Providence. He obviously understands the the Boston market. But the, he's just revealing himself that there's a, a, a you know, it's a very thoughtful and very perceptive thirty uh, five year old man. And and but last last year he was just a blank slate for us. You're right, and and as you said, understandably so. And I think this year he knows his team, and he knows who he has to be for his team. Because in my opinion, the quality of a great coach is what they are to benefit the team. And I think that that can change year to year. You know, um, yes. he seems to be prepared to take any criticism for his guys. He's going to be very supportive of his guys. And he obviously is not going to panic at all <laughs> i mean that's just and now what happens behind closed doors i don't know we don't know and and uh, the d- dynamics between he and brad we have no idea how that works uh other than that we know that brad has faith in him he wouldn't have named him a coach and hand him the keys to the ferrari which he did and 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 uh um so yeah, i'm sure brad has some helpful thoughts for him but but we don't know that it never comes up um uh, no it's it's interesting and and um uh, I, the other thing I think you you alluded to you you know hinting there, uh, he knows he's got a damn good team, and 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 the one the last thing he wants in the world he wants to do is mess it up, and uh, you know as I said I doubt seriously that any other team that that anyone wouldn't trade their roster for the Celtics roster and then see okay here's what I'm going to do with that roster, uh, the, it's the deepest roster I mean we're they're seriously down to one that, with ten useful players that is not a norm in the NBA. You know that that you've got ten useful players, and I'm counting Tillman as one of the, as the tenth. So so, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting thing, and 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 and, and is he also got to? I'm sure he's preparing himself. He knows damn right well that if they don't win, that that the, the you know where the fingers are going to be pointed, and, and barring some unforeseen injury catastrophe that takes out, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, Tatum's fight. gonna. It's gonna be if they don't win the title, and in my opinion. If they lose to anyone but Denver, you know, yeah, okay. after the criticism, I mean, if they lose to Denver in the finals, yeah, I'm good with that because we all know what Denver is. We all know who they have. Um, they have the best player in the league right now. Yes. Period. So um, if they lose to anyone but Denver in the finals, or if they're upset along the way in the playoffs, yeah, there's going to be hell to pay. They're going to take some oh, major heat. It's going to start. Oh, there will be. And, you know, it's going to go to Brown. Then it's going to go to the coach. Yeah, right. I think he knows this, but I'm just commenting. I'm just impressed. He's impressing me more and more with with you know what's that he's 
Which you mean, Brad Stevens has really not made a bad move. <laughs> no, I mean, no kidding. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 key moves and you know, one that was good, very no, good that doesn't get discussed a lot. I, I'm not saying no one ever mentions it. Is bringing Horford back from right. Philly, and 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 what a second, uh, you know, uh, breath of fresh air he's been. He's been terrific. Uh, he's everything you'd ask of him. He, he's absolutely giving you everything he's got. And 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 uh, he's being utilized perfectly well. So they they, they don't play him back to back. They nurse him, and uh, and but he's he's and he's contributed mightily. Here's as we continue to put Joe Mazzulla and the Celtics under the strongest microscope available. Um, the challenge right now, as we we've talked about, and this is a hard thing, man. It's I don't I don't envy him is the final two minutes of the game where, you know, maybe it's not the best to have the ball in Tatum's hands or Brown's hands. And, and that is very hard for an NBA coach to deal with. Now, if you have Phil Jackson and you're coaching the bulls, it's obvious, right? It's obvious who's getting the ball. Jordan, if you have the Lakers, when Jackson was there, it was Kobe, or if it was Pat Riley, you know, basically in the eighties, magic decided who got the ball, right? Yeah. Same thing with Larry. I mean, with Larry, like Larry had the ball in his hands in the final two minutes. He was either going to shoot it or he decided where the ball was going. No, sure. You know, Missoula, he, that's the, that's the tough one. You know, going to be Derek White or go to the open man or, you know, instead of the pound the ball under the floor nine times and take a shot. Yep. And uh, except there was more than nine. It's, it turns out, um, I love the fact that the count was made at one of the, 19. One of our, one of our guys had 19, the other one, one of our guys had 23 poundings before they shot the ball. Yeah. yeah. Which reminds me of that, that funny commercial with uh, Bobo, the, the big guy in Dallas. He, he bounced it, he bounced it, he bounced again, he bounced, he bounced, he bounced again. I love that commercial. I love him. We all love him. Anyway, anyway, it's an interesting thing because uh, when you have a guy that can, in theory, get his own shot, who, is, who happens to be six feet, 10 or 11, and 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 has, possesses sufficient ball handling ability and and moxie to get his own shot, which is I'm talking about Tatum. You know, it's hard not to want to give him the ball. You know, but uh, it, we've got other options. You don't have to just do that. You know, you've got especially those two guards, and, and now you've got a seven three option it, it, that uh, you know you could throw the ball to. And who, by the way, you don't mind him getting fouled, and that's fine. So, yeah, it's it's. It, it is. Uh, it, it's it's be see, interesting to see how this works out. That's uh, where the psychologist of the coach comes in. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we talk about X's and O's, but, you know, I, I mean, Phil Jackson was probably one yeah, of the better psychologists. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Phil, and, and remember, Phil was elevated by as an assistant by right. Jerry Krause. Right. For which he never got enough credit naturally in Chicago. And of course it was trashed in the last dance. And 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 uh, for one for Jerry, he he absolutely uh fostered the career, the coaching career of of Bill yeah, Jackson. Talk about him for I mean he Jerry Krause gave you the label the commissioner, correct? I don't know who did. I don't think it was Jerry Krause. Oh, he had a they had a great nickname though given to him by Pat Williams. He was the sleuth because when he was a scout. Or the bullets and the and the bullets and and the, who else uh, before uh, the bulls I guess he was a scout when I met him fifty years ago literally he was a scout and and everybody knew him this 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 uh, disheveled dumpy guy uh, you know but uh, and and he was very secretive and and he talked out of the side of his mouth and he was right out of a movie and and Pat Williams being Pat Williams uh, very cleverly nicknamed him the sleuth. And and that's where that was his universal nickname in the NBA community, Jerry. I don't know who gave me that nickname. I thought it was I don't know I, I, a David Stern. I don't know who it was. Uh, but I thought I read an SI. It was him. But needless. Oh, to I, say. I'm not gonna. If you, I don't know. I forget. Yeah. Um, I just, I'll, I'll accept it. <laughs> but he was really a character, and like you said, unappreciated because he let Co- Doug Collins go. Correct. Uh, yes. And he went with Phil. That's and then, right. And then. There you go. That's right. Oh, and, and he maneuvered to get Pippen in the draft. He 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 drafted Oakley, who was not a particularly well known uh, out of a small school. Eventually got Rodman. Yes, uh, Rodman at Southeast Southeast Oklahoma. Uh, 
he, I mean, you know, I was so mad. Oh, are we going to go? You know, because we spent a lot enough time in, in uh, during the time of that movie going over it. But it, it was just so manifestly unfair what was done to him. And and uh, now, was he his only worst enemy in certain PR ways? Yes. You know, I accept yeah. that. And and he could have helped himself a lot more. At, 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 and then, but uh, uh, I'm 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 going to defend him always. Well, right now, the sleuth is uh, Brad Stevens, as far as I'm concerned, because <laughs> this guy has been tremendous yeah. uh, and, and very under the radar and very off camera. And oh, no, you don't. No. And, just, and remember the thought with Brad was going to be, oh, he'll do it for a year, then he'll go back to college. You know, the, oh, yeah, they're still lighting candles in Bloomington, Indiana, believe me, hoping that he's going to, you know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Oh, but, I, I don't either, but I'm saying I know they are, you know. That that's their fantasy is that he's going to that he's going to go back to the home state and take over this IU, but um, yeah, I I'm not counting on that. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean Bob, you've seen it. Why would anybody in I don't know if it's if it's been done, but why would anybody leave the comfortable chair of a successful GM position no. to go back to 82 games? Particularly, oh, I know, and 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 uh, and as far as going to college would be concerned. The, entering into that new set, the cesspool that is now oh, collegiate right. basketball and collegiate football because of the NIL and the portal and the madness that goes on. Who I can't imagine why anybody would want to get involved in that. I mean it seriously. I well, I mean, people. look, Jay Billis. Billis is a guy I know that you know and you're a fan of. I mean, he's on TV because of it. Yeah. So, you know, there's plenty, you know, well, that that's another topic. Well, we do have a, a some college basketball games of note in both sexes, though, going yes, on. Yes, we will. And we will get to that. But I need to ask you about something. I really, and, and I we very rarely talk about the media here. I love the NCAA halftime show with Clark, Jay, uh, Kenny, and Charles. I Charles. think it's, the, it's some of the best analysis of any sport out there. Clark was always good. And he was kind of unfairly shunted off the... A team. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, he was used to be on the A team, you know, for them. Right. And now he's in the studio. So, but he's goodness to you. Jay is a great addition for them. I mean, Jay, Jay, he is the absolute basketball adult in the room in that group. And 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 not, you know, I mean, even like the the PhD professor for them. Um, and I think they instantly respect him. And. Uh, uh it, it's it is a good thing because charles is always a fun wild card to have around and 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 kenny likes to try to one-up charles anytime he can and, all the uh, time and, but you know kenny, that's fine to me kenny always thinks of some he always comes up with something unique yeah kenny, whether you he's, agree he's or disagree bright, he's a bright guy because he you know he was, a, he was a, a, tr a terrific point guard uh, you know he was a point guard not a ghost not an all-star but he's got a ring he's got two rings to he's got two rings he's got he's, two rings to show for it and believe me, um, he he played very well in the playoffs. And and I'm back. I remember doing one of my columns in in those two years uh, after a game about you know that there there but for Kenny Smith that the you know the Rockets are screwed. You know, he he was really he was, he was that good. So he could and, play this game. And he always has to say that that team. That he can't say the name Duke. He says that team in Raleigh. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on prize picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On prize picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize picks. Let's let's go to Houston. Speaking of Houston, let's talk about a couple teams right now yeah. in Orlando and Houston. We'll start with them that are playing very well. And I wonder about what you think of. We'll start with Houston near future, and could they have an impact this year? Well, they're basically youth oriented, uh, although you know, sort of with with a very unappreciated, excellent player. I won't say great, 
and Fred Van Vliet, who was who has transferred uh, has transferred his college game seamlessly into the pros. And he's you know I don't know what his real height is. I don't even know what they list him at, but we're talking somewhere between five eleven and six one with, with right. Fred Van Vliet. And and he he's uh, he's become an outstanding solid pro. And but the real story, of course, now is Jalen Green, who is uh, uh, not is, is on a very serious tear, and and uh, is is really become their go-to guy. And I wish uh, if our colleague Mr. Goodman were here, uh, he would be able to regale us with tales of the Jalen Green long before any of us knew anything about Jalen Green. I remember he was all over him during that draft. Jalen Green, folks, if, if you don't know, didn't go to college. He he went out and right went to the G League, and and uh, was this number one, number one or two pick in the draft. You know, he's a high peg draft pick, but he's a serious, serious player. The other the guy that was playing great, but he's hurt, is Sengun. The, uh, but uh, he's actually their, he was their leading scorer. Uh, guess who the coach is, ladies and gentlemen? And, you, I mean, wow, that's a story if they do advance, you know, that Emi Adoka, you know, landed on, you know, on his feet uh, and, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's the coach, boys, if you get that. But I'm not surprised because we know he can coach. We knew he can coach. Well, here he is. He's, he hasn't, hasn't taken much time for him to have make his mark either. I mean, obviously. So, yeah, they're, they're, they've won 11 in a row, I, mean, I believe, or something like that at the moment. And, and, and you, you have to figure they're going to be an interesting playoff team um, for sure. And the West is so bunched, you know, in that. Uh, and I still think Denver's the favorite, but I, I agree. I, you could flip a coin of who's going to be their opponent in the Western Conference Finals. Could be any one of five teams, easily. Absolutely. And, and then you said LeBron's talking about his mortality. LeBron, after he trashed and killed the Nets, he had forty points, nine for ten on threes, <laughs> and and the most his personal PR is nine threes, and uh, he tied it. And after the game, they ask him the you know the usual question about how long you're going to go on, and 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 this is new him you know instead of shrugging it off or do, doing some non sequitur said i'm not gonna be around much longer and that's i i don't know if that's the very first time he's ever gone i've never heard to, that to stay, but I, it's the first time i heard it out i always heard about he and Bronny playing together yeah well you know maybe he, maybe he's starting to realize Bronny isn't going to be Bronny's not that good you know i don't know right. but uh uh so anyway he he's he's still he had, you can't be shocked. He goes up with 40 points. They're going to be very interesting. I don't know. They, they, they could, I mean, they could cause some trouble. I mean, I, I want just, them to make a run. I know as a Celtic fan, it's sacrilege to talk about the Lakers, but I really want them to make a run. I like both players. I like Anthony Davis. Well, I Anthony like LeBron. Davis. They're good people. I want them to make a run. Well, Anthony Davis is, is you know, it, it, he's deep, it, deep into his career now, you know, really he's, he's, he's 30, he's 30 ish. And, yeah. And, Oh, and clock's he, ticking. He's been hurt so much. You, 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 there were times you forgot all about him when you're thinking about who the superior players in the league are. But you, you should never ever forget about Anthony Davis. That's for sure. And uh, and of course, my I've said this here before. The revelation for me is still continues to be Austin Reeves, simply because I just totally had paid zero attention to him until last year's playoffs. But ever since last year's playoffs, this guy's become a really quality player. Uh, Bob, we talked about uh, like Houston could cause some problems. The Lakers could cause some problems. I mean, is while we feel the Celtics are just going to the finals, is there one team in the East who could be an issue? Uh, well, you know, at, at one point we thought it was Cleveland was the chic team for about a month and a half. You right. know, and, and uh, they, they've come in, you know, they uh, and of course they didn't have Mitchell. And now Mitchell's back. We'll see if they can reassemble themselves, you know, in that regard. Uh, the Knicks had that great January. I'm telling you that, that they have some good personnel. And and uh, but once again, uh, Mitchell Robertson just came back and immediately got hurt, sprained his ankle last night. Uh, and but Ananobi and, and Randall await. Oh, the Knicks, if assemble, if they could play, if they can get back, but there's only it's only eight games left or so. You know, if Celtics right. have eight games left, and uh, so everybody's in that. We're two weeks away. Oh, the, the end last day of the season is is a week from Sunday. Um, if they could play the way they played in January, you'd, you'd have to say, you know, they'd be a tough out. Um, uh, it's it's still going to be um, Milwaukee to me. Uh, uh, you know, now once again, Philly is Embiid going to be back? You know, and, and if he's back, 
I'm never going to discount Philly as a chance that they, that they won't be easy to beat either. But right now, I still think it's Milwaukee. Now, the other team that uh, with good young players, a wonderful young front line is 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 um, uh, 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 my, my, Orlando. Okay. You know, with with, with uh, Boncaro and and the Wagner brothers, and and uh, they, they, we we got a whiff of them early on this year. Remember they 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 beat the Celtics and and, and they got our attention. And then of course, you know, they're going to play it. This this will be played up once the playoffs start. You know, Miami. You know, the Jimmy Butler, the playoff guy, the whole thing with with Miami. You know, we'll see. And Bam, and and Bam is a damn good player, by the way. And and. Uh, you know, and they know they've been there before, as we well know. Nobody knows more poignantly than the Celtics what the what the Heat can do in the playoffs right now. So, um, I, I would keep my eye on them. But once again, Celtics. It's quite frankly, it's theirs to win and lose. They play the game the right way, the way they're capable of playing. Nobody has more talent, top to bottom, than the Boston Celtics. Nobody in the East. And uh, I, I, I will will be disappointed if they don't make it to the finals. Uh, now let's move to the women's game, which, as we record tonight, will be LSU and Iowa, which is a, a game nobody wants to miss. No, no. UConn and USC uh, and the other one this evening. Your thoughts overall on that? Uh, this is, uh, you know, the fact that there's never been more attention focused on the women is, and, and, and rightfully so. Um, but this rematch is a, is a women's, you know, promoters match made oh, heaven. God. Uh, you know, and all the more so now because Kim Mulkey uh, is in the news with the the whole, which she stirred up the the hornet's nest before it even happened. I don't know how much attention would have been paid to this Washington Post story, which has finally surfaced, if she hadn't have you know fired that preemptive strike in, in last week, and denouncing it before she even saw it. And um, so, but now it's out there, so people can find it and read it and uh, for themselves. It's a lengthy. It's like a New Yorker level length. You keep thinking, when's it going to end? You know, but it, I'm telling you, I'm serious. But um, it, it's not flattering, but it's not vilifying either. It's it's factual. She has said and done all these things. All right. And, and she has rubbed a lot of people uh, the wrong way, even while she impresses them with her coaching ability, which is unquestioned. She's a great coach. She was a great player. She's a great one of the pivotal figures in the history of women's college basketball. It's Kim Mulkey. There's no question. But the timing is very interesting. And she's clearly, you know, she thinks, that, I don't know what she's applying there. The Washington Post was trying to see that they lose. You know, she's saying the timing was very suspicious and all this and that. All right. Anyway, anyway, back to the basketball. Uh, we've got this little individual uh, inherent rivalry between Angel Reese and, and Caitlin, you know, with the, you know, the, 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 the hand over the eyes yeah. thing. And it's going to be a, a, a lot. Of, it's got. You'd love to be there. I I can imagine the tension is going to be in that building, and 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 it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Now, technically speaking, Iowa is really not playing all that well, and they've survived uh, despite a little. They struggled for a while against Holy Cross, and then the last game, amazingly, they win, and only Caitlin hit a three. No other right. player hit a three. Now that's I, I don't think that happens again. They're not going to beat LSU. No, they're not going to win. They're not going but to win. I'm, I'm, they, they, I'm thinking LSU is going to win this game anyway. But, but hey, Caitlin could come up with 45. That's a fact. You don't know. Uh, so it's going to be worth it. Now the other game, UConn is unlike any. This is a, a march uh, the, to the you know final four. Unlike any that they've ever had, or maybe nobody's ever had. They are suiting up eight players due to the, the proliferation of injury and playing six as a rule and Paige Beckers is back. So if, you know, and, and, and she is a truly great player. And so they're, they're, they have an absolute puncher's chance any game they play as long as Paige Beckers is in that lineup. Uh, and you, you, USC is giving us Juju Watkins, you know. So we've got on there, how lucky for them, the, the women's game, the absolute four marquee players of marquee players that they have are all on display tonight. Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese, Paige Beckers, and Juju Watkins are all on display tonight. I mean, they couldn't pay uh, for that kind of. Uh, oh bonus. no, it's great. And also, though, I was, I was, you know, I, I was talking to a, a friend of mine about this with the way that the 
the men's game has gone where you basically have free agency in college men's basketball now, right? With the transfer yes. portal. I mean, you could just, so there's no continuity generally when it comes to rosters, you know, I mean, the last one was Florida, I think, you know, yes, Florida, right. 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 So what you have now in the women's game is you have teams that people can get behind for multiple years yeah. and that works for fans. It may not That's last year, fans. by the way, you know, that you don't think, you know, that, there's no reason why it can't their game can't evolve into that on their level, you know, with with people running all over the place the way they do in the men's well, game. But well, right now, but, but also though, I mean, and maybe this will change. You know, I I don't you know with with the men's game, a lot of guys leave after one year because they want to go for the money. Yeah. But now, like for example, with Caitlin Clark, I mean, she can some players can make more money playing college. Well, she is yeah, no question. She, with, what a top salary in WNBA is like two hundred forty thousand. Yeah, I mean she's a millionaire. We know this right. already, right? And right. With so, endorsements, so why leave? Um, yeah. So no, uh, the women's game. That is the fact that that staying in is more lucrative than coming out. Right. Uh, and this is why Angel Reese is hesitating. She could come out, but she's not making any uh, uh, plan to do so. And I mean, whether we know publicly, she hasn't she hasn't committed to it yet. She could she could come out, but. You know, I think people are thinking she might stay in, and it's oh yeah, it's it's good. But once again, just I just to echo something I said last time. You know, the idea that we're having this conversation and that these conversations are taking place all over America about women's basketball is 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 absolutely uh, you know impressive and you know the, the, how far this game has come, and and in a short period of time, you know that it's achieved this this level of, of, of notoriety that. Uh, that we wouldn't we wouldn't be having this discussion at this level two years ago let alone five or ten right it's all good stuff bob we'll talk to you again in the middle of the week before you yes, head off the phoenix that's right off the phoenix and my 30 whatever final four <laughs> all right bob bob ryan gary tangway brought to you by price picks the exclusive daily fantasy partner of clns media pick more pick less it's that easy with price picks okay bob talk to you later mm-hmm.